Right. So we have shown how you can go about um, doing your two-sided test. It just means that you have two shaded areas in your student's T distribution. Um, knowing the degrees of freedom and the level of significance, you can easily uh, compute your 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 your. You can easily complete the 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 test. Now let's let's look at a more realistic case in economics, which is the one-sided test. In most cases, economic theory is very clear about the direction of the effect of one variable on another. In that case, we don't need to formulate a two-sided test. A two-sided test implies that there is some degree of ambiguity. We, we are not quite sure whether education would turn out to have a negative or a positive effect, but you may get the theory is very clear on the effect of education. So our now hypothesis will, as usual, deny what theory says. Now, when it is a one-sided test, you can adopt a stance, there is no hard and fast rule, but you can adopt a stance where you still state that education has no effect, okay? Or you can say, I'll show you the two ways, right? Coef of education equal zero, that it has no effect. Generally, econometricians want to test this point against any form of uh, alternative hypothesis. Or you could say coef of education uh, less than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, the less than part here doesn't make much sense because... There is no way education can ever have a less than um, zero effect, a less than a negative effect. But obviously, testing the point zero, if we are able to reject the now hypothesis at the point zero, then we have rejected it for every other point to the left of zero. That's the idea. So, so stating it this way or that way really doesn't matter. Uh, so our H1 will say coefficient of education is greater than zero because theory tells us that education has a positive effect. Hence, we are now saying greater than zero there. Let's say that our level of significance is still 5%. Then we must find our T critical values, which this term is going to be 48 degrees of freedom, 0 0.05. That term, the the tail was divided, the, the, the level of significance was split into two because we had two tails. But now since it's an, an, a one-sided test and it's an upper tail test, so the entire 5% will be in one shaded region, not half of it, okay? And then we will see what we will get there. Let me put an equal sign. Then we must state the decision criterion. If T ops is greater than T critical, reject H naught. What does greater than T critical mean here? It means that it has fallen into the shaded region, okay? Reject H0, otherwise, fail to, okay? So now, in our T orbs, we already calculated it. Um, there it is. But you remember how it's calculated? It's coefficient over its standard error. So... We have it calculated 3.58, okay? So what's the critical value here? We want 5% in one tail. So we come here to our table. The upper row tells us the area in one tail. So we want 5% in one tail, which is this. So we come down come down all the way 
to 40. Because we don't have 48, the next, the number nearest to, 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 40 is, to 48 is 40. So there we go. Um, where is my mouse? It's hiding. Um, is that number there 1.684? Do you see that? 1.684. So our critical value is 1.684. Okay. Now, so now the next thing is to make our decision comparing what we observed, which is the test statistic versus the critical value. Okay. So since T ops is greater than T critical, reject H naught and conclude that education is a positive effect on earnings at the 5% level of significance. You are done with that. Okay, we are done with that. But now, let's say, let's suppose that for some reason, uh, this is just to illustrate, but actually it doesn't make much sense. Um, or maybe I could change this into a demand function for illustration purposes. Let's say now this was QD is equal to, let's take whatever we have there. Let's remove the minus sign there and call it and call it 3.402 and let's put the minus sign on the slope coefficient 0 0.816 uh, price. Okay. Let's say this is the regression we had estimated and again we are going to do a one-sided test. Okay. Now we formulate our now hypothesis. Our now hypothesis will say coef of price is equal to zero. Or if you like, you can say greater than or equal to zero. Okay. We are denying what the theory says here. Or you can just state the point coef equal to zero. There is not much difference there because the entire test is premised on, on the alternative test. The alternative hypothesis determines the structure of the test. So H1, H1 states what theory says. The law of demand claims that there is a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. So it will say coef of price is less than zero, which means it's negative, right? So with that in mind, then our T ops, uh, we need our T critical first. Our T critical will be equal to, from what we have already done so far, saying all these 50 people are what we were looking at. So now, because the, 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 the alternative hypothesis is talking about the negative region, the critical value in question will still be the same number, but this time it will have a negative sign. Okay, so it's a minus 1.684 rather than a 1.684. Okay. Um, so it will be minus 1.684. Oh, look at what I've written. I'm now saying 864. 684. Okay. And now, assuming a 5% level of significance, of course, and your T orbs um, is now minus 3.58. Remembering that your slope coefficient is negative now. It's negative there. So this number will be a negative number. So now, our decision criteria says 
if t ops is less than notice what what i have stated there is less than that term i said greater than because we we're talking about the upper tail okay is less than t critical reject h naught otherwise fail to now why do we have to reject because a number which is far less than which is less than minus 1.684 implies that we are in the shaded region which is the rejection region okay so then what do we do based on the information we have there we can now say since t ops which is minus 3.58 is less than t critical which is minus 6.84 reject h naught and conclude that price has a negative effect on quantity demanded notice that uh, my conclusion is direction of effect my conclusion is a direction of effect in this case because my alternative had specified the direction of the effect okay <clears throat> so this is all about hypothesis testing the other thing you can do is to construct a confidence interval which we call interval estimation estimation now this idea of testing the hypothesis based on a particular value of the estimate sometimes might be very misleading you see a point estimates are very misleading so what we generally do is we want to construct a range of values that have a certain probability of containing the true value of the beta or of the population parameter so what we do is to say estimated so your confidence interval is given by your estimated coefficient plus or minus your t critical times the standard error of the estimated coefficient so this is how you calculate your confidence interval now let's say you want to calculate the confidence interval of education at the five percent level of significance um then we we are going to do it this way we will have the coefficient of education was 0 0.816 plus or minus uh we got a t value of 2.021 2.021 times the standard error was 0 0 0.228 0 0.228 and then we want to find out what happens you will get something like this there will be 0 0.816 minus 2.021 by 0.228 so we will have 0 0.355 and uh, 0.816 plus 2.021 times 0 0.228 1.337 now bearing in mind for example that your earnings are measured in thousands so you will have to multiply by thousand so what you're saying is that the the 95 percent confidence interval is given by 355 rand less than true 
population beta 1 less than uh, 1337 okay now but what what would have generally happened is that we would have formulated a two-sided hypothesis which says coefficient of um, education is equal to zero okay so then the question we have now is to check whether this zero actually lies between 355 and 1337 the, the, the fact of the matter is that it doesn't lie between the two so since oh what have I done here Right, so since the point beta equal to zero lies outside the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval, reject H naught and reject H naught okay so so in other words this confidence interval is an alternative way of testing the same hypothesis that education has no effect on earnings but instead of us testing it around a particular value we construct a range of plausible values within which the true effect of education on earnings might lie and we are saying any number between 355 and 1337 could be true. Could any, any of those numbers, one of those numbers in there could be a true measure of the effect, a population measure of the effect of education on earnings. Okay, so yeah, that's what you will be doing. So understanding, all you need to understand here is how it is constructed and you run with it and you will always be able to um, answer the uh, necessary questions uh, that require you to construct your confidence intervals.